that's what's cool about you guys. You, you put uh, towns in a stroller, take them out for morning sun with you, where you meditate. <laughs> I can't deal with this. I know. I fucking listen. <laughs> You listen to more than my husband listens to me. Oh, you have I listen to you more than I listen to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> something's burning, something's burning, something's burning. How long have you guys been married? Seven years. We've known each other right. since we were 12. Oh, that's right. You guys knew each other in San Diego. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, and your parents have a restaurant in San Diego. Yeah, you have to go if you're ever down there. Yeah. I'll see. It's really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brand new something's burning, everybody. Today's guest, Michael Bostick, Lauren Bostick, from Dear Media, but more importantly, one of my favorite podcasts, and I love what you guys do, The Skinny Confidential. I am a fan. I listen. I'm on my own little weird wellness journey, but you guys kill it. Give me the give me the elevator pitch for, for Dear Media. Well, we have, I'd say, 80 shows at this point. I think I get new numbers every day. Um, we started very female focused, now broadening a bit. We basically not only produce all the shows, but take care of live events, um, distribution of social channels, merchandise. We invest in product lines, commerce brands. You guys are a little bit next level, in my opinion. And I say that the reason we're, we're, we're doing this today is I went in and did Josh Peck's podcast mm -hmm. and I was blown away. I was blown away by nice just level. your operation and then went in listen to uh skinny confidential and the first episode i heard was oh. just lauren talking about her day routine <laughs> and i listened to do it with my daughter isla and we loved it it took about an hour to get through that one morning routine it's, i'm assuming well, is that what happened you're you are I, i'm thinking of the there's so many questions but you are very thoughtful people Thank you. You've put a lot of thought into life, into the way you want to live your life. You've said things that land on me pretty heavy. I'm, I'm in a moment of kind of self-discovery, and you guys are perfect for that. What, what? inspired the self-discovery -discover period that you're going through? Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, a getting completely out of control, like meaning like 275 pounds, uh, uh, we, we were partying from the moment, moment we woke up until way until late and then and eating whatever we want, three corn dogs at a time. And I mean, just real like I that's why I say I'd love to see you guys get off the rails. We get off the rails. I, because, well, you've never seen me and my wife suck down three corn dogs with Chardonnay on our, sitting crisscross applesauce in a field. Like we got fucking loose. Well, I think like why why will we, we will maybe relate more than some of the the guests we've had on our show is like we we like to kind of tighten it up, but then we like to go off the rails. To your point, like I, I think it's rather point. yeah we don't want to we're not boring people. Where we want to sit around and you know go to the gym and meditate all day long. Like, we like to party. No, but you guys do meditate. You do I do. I meditated for forty five minutes. We today. do. It I love we, meditating. Yeah, we'll but go. I don't meditate when I'm hungover. No. Then I would not meditate. <laughs> I would simply not. I would not meditate. I am keto right now. That's why I haven't had sugar. You submitted a, a recipe on, I think, either on your vlog or through your webs or through your podcast. They were uh, lettuce cup BLTs. I love it. So what we're doing is we're going to do a smattering. I've got, this is my inspiration, a Vietnamese shrimp lettuce cup, which I think is going to be phenomenal. I have a Philly cheesesteak lettuce cup because there's nothing better than a little bit of gluttony within the parameters of your fucking boundaries. And then you've got your classic uh, BLT lettuce cup. We're going to start by making my own keto mayonnaise. Yeah, this will be my second home cooked meal of the year. Yeah, he doesn't get home cooked meals. You don't cook at home? No. But what's interesting about your home? <laughs> is uh and I, I said this to leanne i said this to stacy this morning uh it it really is and now that you've moved to austin a place for recovery it is basically set up to make sure that you are utilizing your time there to wind down be with your kids read lip tape everything you really have like studied that's that's amazing that's exactly it's a sanctuary i'm gonna tell you we hide out i'm gonna tell you a secret I listen to podcasts on my bus when I when we drive at night. I get high and I sit, and I and you guys, for whatever reason, in my 
I listen to history podcasts and then you guys. And wow. it just and they just they just play. <laughs> you know, so, there's two it. there's two people in my life that I've been shocked by that listen to our podcast. Who? Who's that? You are one. Yeah. Say Rogan and I'll eat my flip flop. And Sugar Ray is the other Sugar one. Ray? Mark McGrath, Sugar Ray. Oh, I thought you meant Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be is, is he? Yeah. No, Mark McGrath. Mark McGrath looks Sugar a lot Ray. like Ethan Hawke, FYI. Yeah, he does look like Ethan. We just Hawk. had him on the show. I yeah. recognized Ethan Hawke and told him I loved his music. No, you didn't. I swear to God. No, you him, didn't. Him, and he was with Richard Linkletter, big Austin dude. You have he to was, do a parody on that. You have to go to recreate that. I was like, bro, you I love Ethan your music. Hawk. And poor Ethan Hawke was like, thank you very much. <laughs> now, there's part of me that wonders if Ethan Hawke had a side project band that he was like, fucking, this guy's a fan. He's an author as well, Ethan Hawke. Come on in. And we just change the mic during the show. How do you make keto, ma- keto mayonnaise? So, that's a great question. Uh, what you do is you take an egg, okay. a little bit of lemon, Yum. an egg, you put it in there together. Love it. Do half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of, half a teaspoon, I go more salt personally, because who doesn't love a little bit of salt in mayo? <laughs> and then half a teaspoon of mustard, which we eyeball. Are you actually making keto mayonnaise every I'm, single day for yourself? No, I am eating keto mayonnaise. I'm really, so we were talking about this in the stairwell. Mm-hmm. I am a all or nothing dude. Yeah. But that's my problem. Yeah, but I think that's kind of how we are too. Like we're we're either all no, in or all in. Yeah, I don't think so. I think so. I think that he's really all or nothing. Like yeah. all or nothing. No, but I mean, when we're like sitting at Austin and being well, that's what we're doing. But yes. then when we're okay. when we're getting Fair after enough. it, we're getting after it. But the, you know the keto mayonnaise. Yeah, I want to know what getting after it looks like. It, it means you'll have to find out. Have you guys ever done coke? Yeah, I have not. He's not weird. That makes me feel so good. Yeah, I love. She has. You've never done. I've it? never done it. Oh, it's time. You to know grow what? Up. I'm already like a little amped up as it is, and I feel. I, I always thought like if I he did would be, it, I would just if he be, did coke, he would be. Blown. I'd be the annoying guy at the party. No, he would be dealing. <laughs> he way, would be that's, the, that's everyone that does the coke. network <laughs> of coke. Like he would have a network. Oh yeah, you'd give me like you'd be like, would, you'd be like yeah. what the fuck am I doing podcast for? This shit sells itself. No, I would go. I would go deep. I feel like I would go deep in that direction. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a regulator there. I don't think so. I just scared me off. All right, this is looking good. I can do this at oh, home. Oh, shit. I'm just going to pour it all in. This is avocado oil. Okay. Wow, you're really, like, that's really healthy. Avocado oil is the, you can't use regular mayonnaise. What are you doing? Oh, you can't use regular mayonnaise when you're keto. It's got to be avocado oil. Okay. I think something with the sugars. So you just got to emulsify it. And then you put it in the fridge, and by the, and we'll do the the this one last. And so just, why yeah. keto though? What's what is that? Because I, I couldn't figure out rules. So what is keto? It just means no sugar, no bread. No, no. So I'm actually a little more carnivore than anything. Okay. Okay. Um, I I couldn't figure out rules. I did a cleanse. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, prolong. Yeah. Yeah. I did the prolong cleanse. Okay. I lost like 12 pounds and then I said to myself, I didn't know what to do. I went into the cardiologist and I was like, I'm lost. I really was like, I'm lost. And he just was like, well, you, you seem to be doing good right now. And I said, I've been on a cleanse. I'm, I'm in ketosis. And he stopped. He was like, stay in ketosis. I went, what? And he goes, ketosis is everything. He's like, trust me. Cedars is doing a bunch of studies on it. He's like, I'm in ketosis. It, it was reparative for your liver. Uh, they've doing do, doing studies about brain tumors. It's reversing the size of tumors and brain tumors. Sugar's on fucking killer. He's like, stay away. He's like, trust me. The way you live your lifestyle, the longer you can stay in ketosis, the better. Are you hungry? No. No. I have zero hunger. Do you have I more have, energy? I feel like I am through the roof. Yeah, you probably feel so much I better in the morning. I feel amazing. And is your wife doing it with you? Mm. What? Here's the deal. About, <laughs> you turn the emulsifier off. What the fuck yeah. does that mean? Let's get real quiet. Here. <laughs> Here's the deal about, uh, you know, one of the things you guys talk about is a great way to stay in shape is have an accountability uh, partner, okay. accountability buddy. Uh, I have an accountability buddy. <laughs> but she's like, I'm keto adjacent. <laughs> like I can have dessert and a drink and red wine, but I eat a lot of meat. <laughs> I'm like, that's not keto. That's just <laughs> eating whatever the fuck you want and I love having it. a lot of meat. She's editing it. So she's like, she's like, I'm keto adjacent. So it just is a lot of protein. <laughs> All right, we'll put it in the fridge. And then worst case scenario. Yeah. That's mayo. <laughs> Who doesn't love a watery mayo? Uh, 
All right, we'll put this in the fridge. I think I have egg all over the fucking counter. And then worst case scenario, we have pre-made mayo. I'm going to take the shrimp out and let it marinate. Okay. Uh, yeah, my wife is, my wife looks amazing right now. I mean, that sounds creepy, but uh, she looks great right now. She's doing great. And we're on a bunch of, my wife's on uh, a bunch of these great things. And she feels amazing, looks amazing. Yeah. All the anti-aging, all the longevity work is so fucking fascinating. But how do you guys, as a, as people who kind of are uh, kind of like uh, channel markers for people looking for this, like you guys are the person that they go to to get their way out to the sea. How do you sift through the bullshit artists? Well, I was I was sixty pounds heavier after I had a baby. Oh, and then I was me 50. That, you post that picture. I posted that picture. I'll For send real? it to you. I, so I've, I have not like a naturally slim person. I have to no. work it. Yes. Every picture I've seen of you, you're, you're perfect. No, no, uh, oh. I showed Michael a picture the other day and he goes, if you stayed like that and then stop like, talking. Oh my God. This is going to make me sound He goes, terrible. if you stayed like that, dot, 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 didn't say anything. No, no, no. Uh, I I'm said, gonna, I said, it was <laughs> This is the internet's going to kill All the girls are shaking uh, their head. No, I said. Yeah, what did you say? She Let's said, hear what you said. She said, what would you do if I just stayed like this? I love this a hypothetical. Without uh -huh. trying to change. You forgot and the last one. Without trying to change anything. I said, well, that I would maybe have an issue with that if you just kind of like stayed. Yeah. My thing is if you're doing this stuff and trying. Then, <laughs> That's yeah. okay. I'll, I'll top this. Edit that out. Edit no, that no, out. no. Keep it in. Keep it in. And I'll tell you what I said to my wife when we first started dating. And we can put this on a shirt. If you ever get fat, I'll cheat on you. <laughs> I said that to her. I said that to her. Listen, I was I was, I hadn't gotten into therapy yet. I was just a fucking bro, and we we're on a hike in Runyon, and I saw a guy with an overweight wife, and I just went, oh. She goes, what? And I said, if you ever get fat, I'll cheat on you. It's hard after you have a baby. It's not easy. No shit to not cheat it's on them. Not, you mean? No. <laughs> yeah, it, it, took, it, took, it took a lot out of me. To I saw myself up for that. Goodbye. <laughs> I've had to work at it. Michael is never in his entire existence since we've been together, since I've known him since he was 12, we've been together that long, ever said he has a craving, ever. I've never heard this man say, I'm craving this. It's real? Ever. No, I mean, I love good, I obviously love good food, but I, maybe I'm fortunate in the sense that I'm not, yeah. Well, genetics are a Gen motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. my, my dad are. is one of those guys that he, when he's cooking you breakfast, he's asking what we're doing for lunch and dinner before we've got through the breakfast. Complete so, opposite of you. Complete opposites. So I don't know. My mom's different, but no, I, I don't know. I think like what. Michael's naturally black. We, we try to have the Atiyahs, the Hubermans on to give us the information, but then we try to. I guess, quote unquote, dumb it down so that, you know, it's we digestible. Can, it's digestible have you ever us. felt Have you ever felt like a responsibility to be like, I call bullshit? Yeah, if somebody comes on and they're just rattling off a bunch of stuff that's either unrelatable or just, you know, not applicable to the everyday person. Like, I think we zone out if, if somebody comes on and it's too perfect. Like, if they tell me they're never going to have a drink or they're never going to let loose and have fun or they're never going to have a cheat meal. I think, you know, we push back on that. Um, but what we do with the people that come on is we try to pull the stuff that is applicable and attainable like 80 percent of the time right like, yeah. you know if you can cut drinking by 80 percent that was one of the things in the five keys to to happiness that you i think you just maybe re, just released it yeah five keys to happiness yeah you've gone I deep like on the, this i am i like i can't i'm unapologetic on this i'm a, i'm a fan um, and I, but i i like i like i like challenging myself i like hearing different you know that's the problem with this country oh wow bert easy well, that's the problem with this country is not enough people are willing to listen to different opinions. Yeah, sure. Listen, everyone knows I party my dick off. I'm never going to stop partying my dick off. My hero is, this is going to, uh, this is going to creep you out. I'm going to look like a fucking stalker. My hero is like, are all the tragic characters. I'm reading a book right now about Johnny Carson. And, she just uh, read a book about Johnny Carson. No fucking shit. <laughs> that is like is the, it by Henry Bushka? It's, it's, yeah, it's the great one. So it's good. fucking so good. Now well, he's was, gonna read it because you said you read it, and I've been telling no, him to read it the whole time. Uh, I just bought fucking. I just bought the one about the ship where everyone fucking dies. The way, Jesus, man. Dude, hold on. Deep. Well, well, hold on. <laughs> the thing is, is like you gotta be. Listen, if that's someone's book, willing to talk way. out, if someone's willing to recommend a book, it's fucking good. Yeah, that's true. It's fucking good. I'm buying T Peter Tia's book too. But here's the deal. I'm listening to. I must have been listening to the solo one you did about your daily routine. Mm -hmm. And you must have said it, or it. my phone heard it, but I go on Amazon and it's recommended. Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. So good. And I fucking bought it. And I love 
this fucking book. I end up buying Jackie Gleason too, because those are my heroes. So like everyone knows I'm a man of excess. I love excess. I love impulse. Those are my problems. But I'm also a person that wants to live a healthy, fun, fulfilled life. I want to achieve things. I, I'm unapologetically uh, um, uh, like aspirational. Like, And so I like seeing all the things. And that's why I love your podcast is it presents other ways of living. Like your fucking nightly routine, the both of you guys love reading. You love reading. Yeah. My wife loves reading. I don't. I am not a fan of it. However, if you present me a good book, I don't mind reading. Here's the Let's, trick. You've got to get a Kindle, but you got to get I the Kindle can't. with dark mode because here's the deal. When you have the Kindle, you have options with all different kinds of books. So you can be laying in bed when your spouse is sleeping and open your Kindle and you can switch around to what you feel like reading. Where people get fucked is you can't take a book out in the middle of the night and turn the light on usually. At least I can't. So I feel yeah. like the, the Kindle oh. makes it easier to read. Can I tell you that Isla and I thought you read those Kindles the in dark mode so that if... <laughs> Why? So you, I said this out loud to you. <laughs> so that when you fell asleep reading, it didn't wake you back up. That is true. <laughs> oh, for real? Well, also, I was it hurts like, your like, eyes. Good. It's better yeah. for your eyes. Well, I can't. Can I tell you? Well, that? that's like a Huberman tip. You say, okay, don't stare at light, but then we'll do the Kindle in the dark mode. So it's probably yeah. not perfect. He would probably say no light is good. Did you but, hear you Huberman know. today said one of the keys to longevity is not just morning sun, but while you're getting your morning sun, it's going to sound crazy, but I guess it works, is pissing in your pants. You know, I'm I, I'm a fan of butthole sunning. I really, no, you didn't, you're being for real? Yeah. I've heard of this. I didn't know that it was works. really a thing. You should do a whole parody. By the way, Huberman not say piss in your pants. Don't start pissing your pants, everybody. I'm just joking. <laughs> No, I just, I just did. I just did. <laughs> butthole sunning? It's so good for you because if you think about it, your butthole never gets any sun on it. So it's really good for that area to be. This is facts. Science this is, facts. This I'm not making this so up. So she'll go Everyone like super far with this stuff, but I'll, I'll end at the morning sunlight just in the eyes. If I could sun my asshole every morning and you would let me, I would. But you yeah. won't let me. Well, the neighbors, they, they get a little riled <laughs> up when you're out there with our three-year-old with your asshole in the air. By the way, I'm all I'm seeing is a brand integration <laughs> immediately. Do you know how many brands are like, yeah, Lauren's willing to sun her butthole if, with, if you give her an Olipop at the end. <laughs> Olipop's like, yo, we're in. No, but no, I'm, I like, this is the way my brain works. And we are both, I think the, our couple wise, we're very similar, me and my wife and you two, is immediately I'm making this for our, I'm going to slow cook it. I'm making this for our lettuce cups, our BLT lettuce cups. I've said this about, like, we've had a lot of guests on the podcast and yes. I was saying this the other day. There's like 3% of them that I would hang out with socially. Does that make sense? Meaning like yeah. they're, they're all great, nice people, but a lot of these people, they're like so extreme in the wellness or so extreme in the fitness or so, you know, like they don't have any fun or like, you know, they're so into the business. Like we, like, I want to have fun in life, right? Yeah. Like we don't, we, it, it can't all Huberman's be Huberman's a fun dude. Yeah, no, Huberman's like you got to get dude. them to cut loose. But like, I'll tell you one of the things I, I can't really wrap my head around is like when they say, like Huberman and I, he, he did two bears. And one of my hangups was he's like, could you just have one drink a week? And I said, no, because why would I? Like, why would I? I would just not drink. Like, the, like that's how, yeah, that's how we feel. Like, I, that's, 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 and I mean this respectfully. And I, obviously, I, uh, everything I say in life is meant as a joke. When I bust balls on on uh, Huberman, Jay Shetty, I'm a fan. I listen to everything. I, I'm, I try to take in as much as I can. But the thing is, I need you to fucking talk to me sometimes and go like, just be like, yo. Don't drink at all then. Because if who the fuck has one drink? Me, not me. Like, but why? Like, I feel like it's, it's a waste of drinking. It's, it's a waste of time. Like it's, I'd a, it's a waste of calories. It's definitely a waste of calories. Yeah. Why put your why put that through your liver at all? It's yeah, like, you, oh, I, I would rather not drink. This is I am thinly slicing this okay. so that because I don't like chewy steak. Okay. And this is skirt steak. Man, I don't know who makes this knife. But if you recognize this knife and you want to sponsor this podcast, I am fucking all in. All the way over in Asia. <laughs> so um, that's what's cool about you guys. Like you do go like you, you put uh, towns in a stroller, take them out for morning sun with you where you meditate. <laughs> I can't deal with this. I know. I fucking listen. <laughs> more than my husband listens to me. Oh, you have I listen to you more than I listen to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys should come to the Cayman Islands. He's Island repeated photos. more. I didn't realize Cayman Islands. He's Option. actually listening to me. You don't listen to me like this. Listen, let's, let's no, no, stay no. focused on the show. He's like, 
what? He actually listens to what I say. This is so weird to have someone actually listen. Well, hold on. I did get a one page on both of you guys. That's why when I said, I only know your parent, your dad has a restaurant because because of Atia. Atia. Yeah. I love that. Can I tell you the read I would have given for Atia? Yeah, give us You're a like, read. Give go, us a read. You go, the, the, our guest today has written this podcast and they've written this book and he's been on this podcast. All you needed to say is he swam from Maui to the Big Island. That fucking gangster swam at he did? night. Oh, yeah. That's the reason we know Peter Atia. Peter Atia went on Rogan's podcast back in the day. And Rogan's like, so you're a long distance swimmer. The same way Rogan was having all those ultra marathoners on. Peter Atia did the same fucking shit, but swam in the middle of the night. Look, that's why, like, I'll bust balls all day. But that's some gangster he, shit. In the middle of the night, he didn't go to bed. He got in the shipping channel because the ships don't go through the middle of the night. And he swam from Maui to Honolulu, like 25 miles, in the middle of the fucking night. Was there a boat following him? or he's just? Um, about- I'm sure. And Either- isn't there, <laughs> no, 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 no. Isn't there Wait, hold shark? on. That's my favorite question I've ever heard. <laughs> no. No one saw him do it. He just said he did it. Like, he, no one's ever seen him do it. But he said he did it. I no, believe he I'm said kidding. he did it, though. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> There's a boat. They, they've documented it. Wait, so wasn't there sharks or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Peter T is a fucking gangster. He's That's intense. why I'll listen to anything that man says. He fucking walks the walk. David Goggins walks the walk. Cam Haynes walks the walk. Like, those dudes do it. Lane Norton, fucking, g- give me your top five fitness people, fitness longevity people that you fucking go. You say it, I do it. You probably just named him. I, you I think I might have. Yeah, David might Goggins, him. for sure. David, have you ever met him? No. No. Have you met Aubrey? Yeah. yeah I met Aubrey. Yeah? Yes. David Goggins, I've never met, but I've read his book, and he's gnarly. He's, he's gnarly. gnarly. Yeah, he's probably That's the gnarly. That's a different level of gnarly. Yeah. yeah. Who is like David Goggins? No one. Uh, no one's like David You know Goggins. whose book was so good? Dan Bilzerian's. Really? It was I did not expect so that. I'm a big Dan Bilzerian fan. Good. Because my mom had- taught him in first grade. No what? Worries. Yeah, my mom was his teacher in first grade. That's cool. He lived like right around the across the lake from us. I think. Yeah, a lot of people. You know, I think that book, like when we read it, we're like, man, this guy's. Got, we, we had him on the show after we read the book. We're like, this Damn. Is, yeah, we like we went out to Vegas to his kind of like ignite pad out there, and um, you guys he, smoke weed? You, you yeah. do. I know you do. No. Wait, you, but no. you, you mentioned I, it in podcasts. I've that, smoked weed many times before. Yeah, but, but it's not something in your. A weed makes me eat and lazy. Hmm. And the problem? <laughs> I'd rather drink alcohol. Uh, yeah, I have a weird reaction to alcohol where it gives me energy. I ha- I get energy from alcohol. I just feel so like that's the, another reason the I never did coke. I'd rather have because whenever I drink, I can stay up all night. I am shocked. I've said this a number of times. I'm shocked at how many people want to go to bed. Like yeah. I want to stay up all night. Same. I never want the party to end. Yeah, that, and that's well. A- it depends who you're partying with. No, but when I drink alcohol, same thing. I've never, I've been able to, you drink alcohol, I could stay up all night. I, I find it strange people go and pass out. I'm, I'm, because I'm not drinking, I'm just being like, at the end of the night, I'll take a hit of a vape pen. See, if I do that, though, I'm spinning off the planet. Michael is really into smoking a cigar right now, which I'm obsessed with because I've never right felt now? a harder penis what? <laughs> than after smoking a cigar. There is something about... But keep that part in. No, keep that part this in. is actually... Yeah. Every single guy should do this. So when you smoke a cigar, it does something to your testosterone, and it feels so different. I think it just gets the blood flowing. <laughs> I, well, I don't know, know what well, it does. It is like it is like a dildo. Well, this I know about you, Bert. I know you are a big cigar guy. I am just starting my cigar journey, so I'm, I'm still a novice, but I... I like it a lot, and I, I yeah, like. But he has to get like the accessories. So, so here's the thing: if I'm if I'm limiting the alcohol, I need to still have something to do. I yeah. can't just sit there at a yeah. table with nothing. And so no. I feel like a cigar. I could sit there for like 45 yeah, minutes and be Mormons. Entertained. Yeah, yeah. Big do you, are you smoking cigars now? Like, because there's only one ingredient, so those can't be that bad, can they? No, I'm, I'm smoking cigars aggressively. Yeah, I don't think cigars are that bad. No, they're not that bad. Yeah. Well, I think they get a bad rap because of the cigarettes. They get like they get a, they get a bad rap. It's like smoking. It's uh. It's like anal sex had a bad rap in the 80s because of AIDS, but you can still do it. You just got to do it the certain way. <laughs> Never thought but do about it after you smoke a cigar. No applause break for that joke? That's a fucking great joke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I, clearly, I have one side of this burner that's very hot and the other side that's not. <laughs> um, the I'm, I'm a big cigar fan. I'm a big treat guy. 
Like that's if if I did your podcast, I wouldn't. I'd want to just talk about treats. What because, like like desserts? Nope, treats. Treats are everywhere. I'm so I want to write a self help book. I'm not joking. I know this sounds like a joke, but I want to write a self help book. Um, based on how I've succeeded, because listen, anyone can succeed if you follow Peter Atia's advice. Yeah, you, yeah, that's obvious. That's going to happen. It's it's a no brainer. Same with David Goggins. I would buy your self-help book in one second. I, you know my first chapter? What? Give yourself a nickname. Give yourself a nickname. Yeah. Give okay. yourself an alter ego. Give yourself someone that you can go, when you achieve, you can go, the fucking machine. <laughs> Give something where people can yell it to you, and you hear it, and it gives you a false sense of accomplishment. Something, sometimes, like, today I was, I was like, going, like, I wonder what my day looks like compared to theirs. One of the things I love immediately when I wake up and we should go tit for tat. First thing you do when you wake up, go touch her ass pretty much Ooh. real quick. Make sure see, I, I gauge the temperature if I'm in trouble. Yesterday we got on the plane and she was, it was a little dicey. She was a little angry with me. And so then I, I tap over and I, I gauge to see if, how angry she still is. The first uh, thing I do when I wake up is I try, I try. try, no, I try to meditate. I try. Okay. It depends though. And then you scrape your tongue. And I then scrape you my tongue. But you got to scrape your tongue. Every single one of your listeners that is breathing needs a tongue scraper. And you do it before you drink water because? Because you don't want to swallow all the bacteria that's been on your mouth all night. That's right. It's yeah, really people are good. catching on to our buddy just posted like with his tongue out and all these girls came in and were like, oh, all look at his tongue. All these girls messaged me and said, your friend needs to scrape his tongue. And he's a good looking dude, but they were not having his tongue. You can't really? have a uh, white tongue. And my thing is like, what's the, what's the point of <laughs> brushing your teeth if you're not going to take oh. care of your tongue? So you're saying if you don't brush your teeth, you don't need to scrape your tongue. I'm a big water pick guy. I would rather you scrape your tongue than brush your teeth. That's how serious I am about scraping your tongue. Um, I used to be a big tongue scraper. Okay. But you do it with a copper? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm. hold on. I follow. When do you, you have guys access say, to our nest? I got to get in there. <laughs> when you guys post stuff you like, yeah. it's a really cool post. I yeah. follow all the things. <laughs> I follow all the things. I think it's fun. Like you go, this is the, this is the face fucking roller I use. <laughs> I brought yeah. you one. Yeah, I we, brought you one. You um. To tighten the pores. Tighten the pores and uh, I'm listen. I I'm, I want to know your bring down tape. the inflammation. Lip tape is so inflammation's a motherfucker. Yeah, it's a motherfucker. That is one thing alcohol is not so helpful with. You, oh, you're it's telling nice. me. So, but I, when I wake up, the first thing I do is I get on Instagram. And I inspire myself. Like That's I try cool. to look for inspiration. Everyone says, uh, first thing you can't, you can't look at your phone first thing. Well, I'm you're like, looking for inspiration. I don't agree yeah. with that. That's but, kind of yeah. a meditation in itself because you're looking for the good. Yeah. Oh, I look for the good. And then I look for, and then, <laughs> well, then I <laughs> sometimes have a fake arguments in my head, say, head with people that don't really exist or don't think that way about me. You think I'm weak? And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm not fucking weak. I'll show you I'm not weak. I'm going to get up. I'm going to work out. I'm going to fucking do a promo. What do you see how many tickets I sell on dot, dot, dot? Fuck you. You think you think you can talk. And they've never said a thing. They've never said a thing. <laughs> but I'm like, you think you can talk to me like that? You don't even fucking know who I am. You don't know what I can do. You don't think I can bench 270? I'll show you 310. This like, is meditating, by the way, what you're, do what oh, you're doing. Real? This is a version of meditating. This is manifestation, visual what's visualization. That, what's that guy that... So you do... That is meditating. Patrick Bet David. Do you know that guy? You've no. seen him? He's, a, he, he's interesting. He just wrote a book called, like, Choose Your Enemies Wisely. I haven't read it yet, but it's Ooh, all about, like... like it's, it's this. It's about, like, high achievers find, Dude. you know, enemies that they can compete against. What time do you wake up in the morning? 6.30. What? Yeah. what about if you're hungover? 6.37. 6.37. You know the yeah. worst? Being hung over with toddlers in the house or young children? It's, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's not a worse hell that exists than waking up hung over with kids that don't give a shit if you're hung over. Oh, I remember those days so fucking vividly. Yeah, that's also been the reason. There? So what I used what to do was I would put get two belts. Okay. And I'd put a belt around me and a belt around them and I'd pass out. <laughs> fucking 100% true. Just so they lay there? Because fucking Isla was a goddamn lunatic. <laughs> and you, if you didn't have a belt on her, she would be gone. And you'd wake up. You ever woken up in your house and be like, where the fuck is my kid? <laughs> it's terrifying. How old can you do the belt thing? Like what? I age? did it up until the last time we were in Aspen. Okay. And Isla got out. I was, <laughs> I, and I got, she got out of the belt and I was, and she was old enough to walk. Like, like two? 
I, Leanne would have to be here. I don't remember ages. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like, but yeah, probably two. And uh, and I was like, fucking woke up in a panic and it wasn't my house. So I didn't know where she could hide. <laughs> where was she? It was just an Airbnb. She was in the kitchen going through the trash can. <laughs> She was a Hold she on. was she so was a big scavenger back in I'm the day. To, Wait, the belt is the belt the is to keep them in the yeah, belt. Yeah, you yeah take, I oh. put a belt on me, okay. and then I take a belt, loop it through that, okay. and then put a belt on them, tie it tight, and then we'd watch TV like this, and I'd pass out. <laughs> like a leash. Yeah, no, like but a what leash. if they want to get up the whole? Well, if yeah. they got up, they got to figure out a way out of the belt, and then I'd have figured a way out, and I was fucked. And That's Leanne was sick. That's actually not a bad idea because you just put a TV in front of them. Yeah. You got to get some rest when you're hungover. Oh, we didn't have iPads back then. We had like, like 19 years ago, you had iPads, but I think maybe you did. I don't even think you did. No. We had to watch, uh, uh, what was the Baby Einstein? With commercials, which is probably a Oh, nightmare. and fucking Blue's Clues. You had to watch TV with them. You had to sit on a fucking couch. Oh. Oh, it was fucking painful. Yeah, that sounds like a nightmare. I, I had so many times where I'd wake up. I remember one time, I have a video of this. I woke up. I was supposed to be taking care of Isla. Leanne's at work, George is in preschool, and I wake up and Isla is shitting on my on my treadmill. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, fuck. Do you ever feel like your money is flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going? Oh, I do too. And you know what? It's all those subscriptions. Think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps you used once, delivery services, and parenting apps, my kids. My kids are in high school. Uh, I'm guilty of this too. So I used Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on. And it was absolutely eye-opening. I was littered with so many of them. And I had them cancel the ones I didn't want to use anymore. It was brilliant. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members on average $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Trust me, right now, you are wasting money. You can save money. You can get the things you want in life by canceling your subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash burning. That's rocketmoney.com slash burning. Rocketmoney.com slash burning. God damn it. What time it is? I got to get you guys out of here, but I got, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I got chicken to do there. Let's start. How about this? Let's start with steak tacos. Okay. We're going to do this cheese, steak and cheese taco. Done. We're, 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 uh, what's it called? We're going to start with the steak and cheese lettuce wraps, and we'll sample that, and then we'll go on to the shrimp one. We'll sample that, and then we'll go on to the uh, BLT. And and we're almost I'm there. Pumped. Yeah. You guys flying out today? We're flying uh, tonight. out tonight. Tonight? Yeah. yeah, tonight. Nice. We flew in for you in an interview. In and out. Who's the interview? Steph Shep. She is... She's, well, she's Kim Kardashian's. I had a dream I dated Kim Kardashian last night. <laughs> you never know. I had a dream that I dated Kim Kardashian back when I first moved to LA and I didn't know it was Kim Kardashian. She wasn't like done the way she is now. And I was like, and then I found out and I was like, that was fucking Kim Kardashian. They're like, Bert, she had three sisters. You don't remember the sisters? Chloe. And I was like, oh shit, the, the Kardashians. I dated Kim Kardashian. And, I, and then someone was like, what do you remember about her? And I was like, she had great nipples. <laughs> That was my interview. I bet that's true. I bet. I bet she, you know, I look at women sometimes. This is so misogynistic. It may be the most misogynistic thing I'll ever say. <laughs> well, it's not even remotely close. But uh, <laughs> as like, when I see women blowing up or doing big things, I go, how great would their husband have been in the 1800s? Because all their energy would have been focused to supporting him. Ah, and so like Whitney Cummings' husband uh-huh. in the turn of the century would have been a tycoon. Maybe Abe, Lin- Abe Lincoln, maybe. Uh, I'm thinking Rockefeller. Okay. I'm thinking maybe Flagler. Okay. I'm really big into history podcasts about the state of Florida right now. Yeah, that's the other <laughs> thing I listen to nonstop. I think I think we're good with steak. So the state of Florida's wild. History of Florida. No, no. You grew up in San Diego. San Diego. Did you enjoy San Diego growing up? We did. It's, we it's very. It's very much like Santa Barbara, I think. It's idyllic. We didn't know anything different, you know? It's sort of a bubble. It's um, a little slow. It's a little slow. Were you guys, were you guys who you were? When did you become who you are? Like, meaning, 
at what point did you have a realization or awakening where you're like, I want to, I want to fucking, I want to supersize my life. I want big things. I want like, were you guys ever stoners and lazy and bored and not, not getting shit done and like, or have you guys always been pretty much this? We definitely drink a lot of alcohol. I love that. I a love lot that of alcohol. So I think our that- school. I feel like we were drinking like in college, like in it, like the way people drink in college. We were drinking like that when we were fifteen. How old were you the first time you got drunk? Twelve. Wow. Okay. I had 13. a fake ID before I had a real ID. You really? And we used to go to the liquor store. But you guys used to steal Naughty Light. Wait, that, that was we used to. Oh my god, we used to drink Natural Light or Natural Ice and Captain Morgan and Jack Daniels. Natural Light. Yeah, that was Natty like the thing. Ice is a fucking move. Yeah, yeah Natty, I, but that's all we could afford, you know? But yeah, yeah I, I would say we were always entrepreneurial, always. Really? Looking at my whole life, I think with you too, like we're, always I was, entrepreneurial. I was really bad in school, but I was always he was horrible hustling at something. I know that. You were not good in no, school. No, he was not good in school. The Harvard of the Desert, the University of Arizona. Yeah, not good in school. The Harvard of the Desert. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of alcohol at, at our school. Really? Yeah. Did peep, Did you guys, when did you fall in love? We fell in love when we were 12. Really? We got caught in the closet by my father when we were 13. Naked. Naked. We... Shut up. Dad, I, we, uh, my dad walked in. I was, we were about naked. I, I so, got, no, no. She, we were there, and I was trying to get some, and... He was begging for a blowjob. We were 12 years old, and the dad pulls into the driveway in his SUV, and I hear him. And I was like, oh shit. So I went and hid in her closet. You know, in the old- By the way, he's yeah. like 4'1 at this time, and I'm this You know tall. the old horror movies when the person. Oh, you were always this tall? Yeah, I'm 5'7, and he's literal 4'1. The first time I saw her, she was fully developed. I thought she was the substitute teacher, and then I was like a kid. But you know, like when the, in the movies, when E.T.'s looking out of little slits in the, in the, the closet? Yeah. You know, and it, yeah. I was in there, and I hear her dad charging up the stairs. And then she gets in the closet with me, which was a huge mistake. Oh, I didn't fuck. think it through. And her five year old sister's. <laughs> Looking under the bed, and the first thing I see is this grown man rip the closet open, grab me by the what's back your of the head. E- what's your ethnicity? Italian? No, I don't even know. <laughs> oh, that's the future. That's the future. I have to do ancestry DNA. <laughs> no, she's like Norwegian or something. Yeah, like Swedish. You're Norwegian. Swedish. 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 What kind of restaurant does your family have? Scottish. They have a Scottish uh, restaurant like McDonald's. No, it's kind of like Southwestern fusion. It's good. Really? It's delicious. A lot of meat. A lot of good margaritas. Fucking a lot high. of tequila. So wait, what's your move on margaritas? My move Classic. is the skinniest margarita in the world with a half rim of salt. Yeah. And some jalapenos. Oh, I love jalapenos. No, like, the cl- you got, I think the classic is the best. Just classic. No, I don't want to waste calories on the classic. That's I, Dude, calories. I am all about not wasting yeah, calories. I don't want to waste calories on I them. love when you wake up and you go, I didn't fuck it up last night. Yeah. I don't want to. The classic. So if you have a margarita, sugar. you just, you will, what will you do? Uh, <laughs> I will go frozen margarita okay. frozen with, frozen with wow. all the calories, and then I'll just keep putting shots in. That's smart. Until it waters itself down, that's and I'll actually, just do one. That's like kind of a skinny tip. And you guys aren't big shit. Like, you don't cook a lot at home. Uh, not really. It's just we, not one of our no. best skill sets. Listen, I feel like you have to, like, check and balance your life. You only have so much time in a day. Yeah. If, if you don't fucking enjoy it, why do it? That's my thing about everything. I don't know if I enjoy it yet. I feel, I don't know. Like, I'm watching you. You're very good at doing I enjoy this. it. I it, enjoy making you happy. Huh. That's my thing. And that's my, like, so whatever your thing is in life, like, I, like Peter Atiyah was saying, he just loves to work out. Like, it, he loves that activity. He loves the stress on his body i don't i i enjoy it i enjoy working out i enjoy the feeling afterwards more than i do the actual workout have you worst. always been doing this workout or is this just newly inspired like- i've always been working out i've, I've been run, working out i'm a i'm a sneaky athletic kind of person like i ran the la marathon with no training when everyone was like there's no way you can do that so i can i i have a little bit of like uh even when i was partying the hardest i was partying i still could work out pretty good well, that's what I was saying when we came in. I was like, you have like a weird natural, abil- like athletic ability in weird areas. Yeah. And so like, I couldn't, I couldn't run that marathon. No, way. no, you could. You'd be shocked. You yeah. know, the, the Native Americans marched from Florida to fucking Missouri. 
Trump <laughs> I, can run America. I guess if I absolutely had to, yes, but yeah. Dan Bolzerian in his book, he rode a bike from Las Vegas to where? Yeah, but that's on a bet, and it was a recumbent bike. That's an interesting. I, I love that. By the way, I'm what that's that's my bike? shit. Dan Bolzerian is. I love that guy. He's awesome. He's a badass dude. I like that guy. I like all the guys. You know, here's the thing: is I, as a comic, you bust balls on anything. You try to be contrarian, but I love. I love. I just, I get love being a fan of shit. I like being interested in stuff. I like being like, like turned on to stuff. Like I love you it. You got it's, a lot of different interests. I do. Yeah, you do. Well, it's better. I mean, there's a lot of haters these days. You know, it's better to be, you know, somebody who's passionate about, you know, being excited about different things, you know? I don't like hating. I do understand the vibe of like, like I understand, I understand I understand it. If you don't understand it, you're lost. Like if you go, I don't get why people leave negative comments. You're like, well, you're not on Instagram enough. Yeah, right. Like cheese. Yeah. You guys you do don't, cheese. Yes, cheese. All I the think things. the way I've always looked at that is like I fully get it, but I've never seen the productivity in it. No, it's just right. It's it's the same. It's the same thing about like uh, putting your finger in your ass and smelling it. You're like, why do it? But <laughs> fuck it, I'll do it. You know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Stace. No, I was gonna have the cheese melt into this. And so, but like, it's like, I don't get it, but I understand it. Like, I, I, like, I don't do it, but I understand it. Like, I just, it's, it's part of human nature to not have something, see something with the thing you want and to hate them. Yeah. Does it ever get to you? Negative comments? Of course. Yeah. These are fucking way too big. I made them way too big. I mean, they're beautiful. Yeah. Here. What a meal. Please. This looks pretty bomb though. Yeah. I'm going to give you this one. I think it's a little more manageable to wrap your hands around. I, I think this it. one's a little bit of a fuck up. I'm going to take a first bite and tell okay, you guys if okay. you should take a bite. Okay. 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 And then obviously keto. Okay. I um, love it. it should be filled with flavor. Okay. This looks amazing. What if I cooked for you every night like this? Mm -hmm. Is it good? Is it? <laughs> Wait, I got to take a picture of it first. Well, yeah. my reaction is a little better than yours, but yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't cook for him, by the way. He critiques every single thing I do. He'll be like, uh, this is an 8.5. So I, that's why I don't want to cook. It's not fun to cook for someone that's constantly critiquing. I've uh, up the enthusiasm in the house. This is what I wish you had said. Okay, let's hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. The texture of the meat is interesting. It's not ground beef, but it's not technically steak. It's so thinly shredded that it falls apart in your mouth, but you still get the consistency of a steak. I love what you did with the meat, Bert. The cheese really adds a ton. I like that you put it on the bottom because it kind of binds and holds it all together. Well, and it, and it gives you a nice little, you'll notice the cheese gives you a little bite okay. that you don't expect. The onions up, were cooked up to reaction. perfection. Use this oh reaction. Oh my God. It actually is really good. Yeah, the onions were cooked perfection. They're just melt the, in your the mouth. The cheese, it's really good. I mean, mm. I would eat this every single night. This Ooh, is my, my time of thing. I'll eat the same thing every single day. It takes, like, mm. it's like decision fatigue. I would eat this every day. I've been doing ribeyes every day. Mm. Just yeah. plain ribeye? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's fucking good, actually. Oh. That's a 10 out of 10. Mm. I hope you watch what he was doing so you can make it for me. That's good shrimp. You know, I, you can repeat things back to me that I've told you. Mm -hmm. Like, you gotta bring me a meal. I'm bringing skinny this up. Damn, this is good. The hardest thing about not drinking is that I like the act of having a specific cocktail with what I'm eating. You know? So, like, here's the problem. Like, when I have, like, a chip and a salsa, I want, like, a margarita. It's hard to go like, out. Like, this is, like, I could say, that's the hard thing is that you associate certain foods with a certain alcohol. Well, like, and also, who wants Italian food if you're not having, like... One. No. So, this next meal is inspired from, um, I, I got... I went uh, rock climbing in Halong Bay. I know. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever said that. Free time. solo rock climbing in Halong Bay. <laughs> and one of the things they did uh, the night after we went, we had these great Vietnamese beers on this junk boat, and they made uh, shrimp. And all you dipped it in was lime, salt, pepper, with a little bit of these pep. Uh, yeah, these yeah, that sounds good. And it was so fucking good that i go i want those in the taco i want to see if those are as good as i remember them to yeah. be. do you ever feel like a do you ever feel like a responsibility i feel like this sometimes to be so honest with your marriage that it's semi destructive like give an example of what you mean uh i can't be i can't i i 
I'm afraid to lie about things in our marriage. I'm afraid they'll come out and look like our lying. So I tell everyone where Leanne and I are both on testosterone. We're on, she's on progesterone. Like I, I'm so open and honest with my marriage that sometimes it's like, I remember the first time I did it, we were talking about, I was on stage and I was talking about her giving birth. And I was like, you know, they shit when they give birth. And I was like, she's shit in a net. Like, how do you, did you watch the baby come out? Oh yeah. See, I wouldn't let him watch. Maybe stand like by her no. shoulder. Which oh, for real? What else no. her preference? I was like, All right. bro, you missed a fucking fireworks show. <laughs> they shit, they piss, and they give him a piece. You got a piece of out of me, or you tear? I I got six stitches. No, but did they, I did got you? the husband stitch? Leanne didn't. You know, <laughs> Leanne got, Leanne. Hey, Leanne Leanne got the NBA stitch. Last time you said the husband the stitch, NBA. people got pissed off about that too. Remember? Why? Oh yeah, oh, people got pissed off that I said off. I got the husband stitch. You know, it's, uh, here's a, you got to register on on how pissed off they get and does it matter to you like right like uh, yeah because this is what someone said to me i want to give the guy credit but i'm not because he's a fucking cunt <laughs> but someone reddit was saying how fat i was and it got back to me this guy i'm not gonna say anyone's names <laughs> he's he's like you're not fat as reddit says and i was like huh and he's like oh they said you're gonna die you're like he just was it was he was being fun about it but it meant something to me and it bothered me and i got I called my other friend and i was like i'm not that fucking fat and he goes well if it didn't bother you, if it bothered you, then something must be accurate. Huh. And he's like, so address the thing that's accurate, and then it won't bother you. He's like, you got to let that register. If it's something that bothers you, then maybe there's something real about it. Yep. And I went, oh. And then I just had to say, I have to do, I have to, I have, to have my, my words have meaning. I have to stand behind my words. I have to stand behind my actions. I can't misrepresent myself. And I was misrepresenting myself. So I was telling people. I f I'm in good shape. I fuck like, but I looked like I was dying. I was like 275 pounds, red as fuck, bloated as fuck. I was, I'd sleep. I sound like a cow. Like you got to get mouth tape. Uh, you're t tell me about mouth tape. You got to get mouth tape. Tell I, me about I, mouth tape. You have to have mouth tape. You have to tape your mouth shut. It's mm. such a beauty hack. It will make your jawline be so snatched. Do you realize how much work has to go into this jawline? No, not a lot of work. Well, you'd be shocked. Just tape it shut because then you're... Do you tape your mouth? No. Look at his jawline, though. You got a pretty fucking sick... You got a great jawline. I've been that's taping not, my mouth. That's not mouth tape. It's not just mouth tape. It's also air sculpt. <laughs> air sculpt? Yes. What's air sculpt? They, no, like, but the, but they the, suck. They they put a little like no, but the hole big, right there and they like melt the fat right here. The big thing it about... Works. That shit... But didn't uh, Bridget Nielsen get that done? And they fucked up her no, hips. No, that's cool sculpt. And that was Bridget, not Bridget Nielsen. It was, uh, what's her name? I forgot. Um, I forgot her name. No, but the thing is, is but it, no, that was it's, cool it's proper tongue posture. Linda a lot of people, stuff. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's proper tongue posture. A lot posture. of people it sleep with their mouth hanging open. you how to have proper tongue posture. But if you, if you sleep with your mouth closed, you don't it. need it. Your, your, your mouth is hanging open all night long because mm -hmm. you're snoring. Yeah. But if you close it shut, it supports your jawline and it encourages you to breathe out of your nose, which you'll wake up with 10 well, times people, more people that are, people that are I'm mouth, addicted to it. No, people that are really? mouth breathers should consider it, but people that are nose breathers don't I'm need to do it. I'm a hardcore mouth breather. And then maybe Meaning you. stupid, I'm a mouth breather. If you taped your mouth shut for one night, you would notice your energy levels skyrocket from what they are now. Are you serious? I've, well, one it's, night. It's, it's less of an aesthetic thing and more night. of like a good sleep thing. But I lick my lips a lot while I sleep. Yeah, but we, <laughs> like sometimes we have to change our habits. You don't have to lick your lips anymore. <laughs> I have a lot of, yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I got gotcha. you. Here's the thing about shrimp. Fucking like 10 calories of shrimp. Wow. A lot of protein too. God, protein. you know a lot of different fun facts, don't you? No, I don't. You do? I, no, but I, can I tell you, I'm obsessed with people who um, have their fun facts. I'm not going to load you up on shrimp. We might just go skinny skinny here we go and then i'm going to start your last one and get you guys Thank out you. of here Thank hold you. on i'm going to try one myself yep i'm going to go oh this is the cup you should have had fuck why oh it just looks great damn the shrimp smells good okay try taping your mouth shut for three nights you will have more energy the shrimp's fucking good i like to talk i talk in my sleep is that am i just gonna be mumbling just type it shut just your wife could use a break <laughs> I love it. Good. Spicy. Is it? Mm -hmm. What's the one life hack you guys kind of like disagree on all the time where you're like, I keep telling him. Oh, 100%. 100. What, do you, what am I going to say? He, have phone in the morning? he wakes up and stares at his phone. I'm the phone. Yeah. Yeah, but you're looking at the. It news. doesn't bug me. 
the, oh, news. the news. No, uh, wh- you're looking at the news, well, and so it doesn't bug me. Though. I also, like when mm. you get into that phone, mm. you're reacting enough. to everyone. That's what we disagree on. Mmm, yeah. mmm. The shrimp's oh, good. Damn good. Mm, a little spicy. Uh, mm. I mm. love shrimp. How is it spicy? The peppers? Yeah, the peppers give it a little kick. A lot of kick. Damn, this is good. <laughs> All right, let's see how our mayonnaise is doing. Call the whole blog into question. Wow, Damn. that looks great. Hey, where's the other mayonnaise? <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, and I put it in this cool ca- container so that you'd recognize it. I didn't want you to feel like you didn't recognize the mayonnaise, so. Do we have other mayonnaise? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You hit it hard with that food processor. How old are you guys? 30? 37. 37? Yeah. You're older than he is? Yeah, I'm an, a year older. He reminds me every day. I do too. My wife's two years older than me. I want to throw up when I say it. How old are you? <laughs> uh, younger than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 50. My wife actually said, is he going to be tearing the chicken open with his hands? And Stacey said, yeah. And Leanne goes, good. I want everyone to see how he does it. Because she hates it more than why? anything. She's like, why would you tear it open with your hands? She does like like forks and knives. And she, it was so funny. And she's like a legit redneck. So like, like they, they didn't have forks until she was like 20. <laughs> <laughs> Are okay. you guys just laughing all day long? No. <laughs> You'd be shocked how much I fucking A-list material I drop in their laps and they just fucking can't appreciate. All right. Watch this. Easy peasy. You ready? Yep. Ready. Bacon. Kay. Chop it up. Okay. I'm going new cutting board. This is the heaviest cutting board in the fucking world. Jesus Christ. <laughs> By the way, what a sponsor. Give me a fucking 40 pound head cutting board. <laughs> They're like, well, I, I'm, I do steroids. Chop up some bacon. Okay. Oh, look at this. Bacon's better. Did you make anything for Arnold after you guys worked out? Uh, No. I went to lunch and I went to breakfast and I saw Ed Norton at breakfast. <laughs> How crazy is that? And? Uh, he is different than Arnold. Why? He's an actor. Like, I'm not saying Arnold's not an actor, but Arnold's like a movie star. Like, he gives you everything you, you want from him. You know? Ah, look at this. Get down. You know? And you're like, <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, Ed Norton was like, he's just an actor. He's like, he's a shy guy. And he's, I think he just fell in love with what he does. And he does it. Whereas, like, if you recognize me... I hate to say this, even in an airport, you'll get everything you wanted out of your moment with Bert. Oh. You'll be like, fuck, that was crazy. He took his shirt off and did a shot with us. His daughter was there. I think she was crying. <laughs> <laughs> like I I I definitely Man of the people. Well, no, I, I just know it means a lot to me. It meant a lot to me growing up, and it still does when you meet like a celebrity and they're generous with their time. And so I understand that. I understand the responsibility. I'm not saying Ed Norton did anything wrong. I'm just saying that, like, you probably don't want to meet him at breakfast. <laughs> like, I, mean, I feel like with, you I mean, you guys get, like, a, a, a ton of energy from the crowd, right? Yeah. Or, like, maybe, like, an actor, you don't get the... Well, I don't think he, I don't think it's what he signed up for. I think he signed yeah. up to be a fucking actor. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I can also, I know I'm a celebrity, but, like, that's not my thing. Like, I just want to fucking do the work, have the work speak for itself, have people enjoy the work. I mean, he's a fucking amazing actor. Sure. Not saying Arnold's not, but Arnold just also had a, he had a responsibility and he had different wants. It's like, you know, sometimes those wants confuse yourself. Like Nirvana were shameless self-promoters. You probably don't know that. And that was the thing is like, how we, I just talked to a band goose about it and we're like, yeah, if people don't know about the shit you're doing, right? Yeah. then why do it? Right. Yeah. There's a lot of brilliant comedians out there that aren't the best promoters. And and unless they can tether themselves to someone who can promote, you may not hear about them. I do want to put an avocado in there. Like, do you know who David Tell is? No. Yeah. Best comedian in the world. Not the best promoter. Not his fault. He's too good of a comedian. And to be honest with you, I don't think any of us want to see David Tell spend time away from writing jokes to tell you about his new hour. But I will tell you, his new hour is fucking insane. And I'll tell you because I don't mind promoting, especially something I'm not attached to, like I didn't make. I think he's fucking amazing. And I'll say it here and I'll say it on my Instagram. He's that fucking brilliant. David Tell is a goddamn genius. Didn't he used to have a TV show too? Insomniac, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Who is the best comedian that you think is, uh, that he's the best? In my opinion, he's the greatest. I mean, I think I created my fully loaded festival just so I could work with him. I mean, that's crazy. That is a crazy thing to say, but it's kind of accurate. He's that fucking good. One of my favorite memories ever is watching my daughter, Georgia, watch Dave Attell on Father's Day. I heard your there. girls are really funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are. They're fucking weird as shit. And it was really cool to introduce them to comedy because they didn't get they didn't get comedy. They knew I did it, but they didn't understand. It's kind of cool, you know. It's like when your kids start realizing they're getting old and they're like, Dad, how come you look so fucking amazing? You're like, Well, <laughs> do you remember those teas your mom and I used to drink? <laughs> you know? So so here it we bring it home. BLT lettuce wraps. Okay. Ooh, I'm gonna put some tomato on here. So is this how you eat on a day-to-day -day basis? Lately, yeah. Wow. Lately. <laughs> All right. This is the BLT. And by the way, I went light on the mayo because the amount I made was just a titch. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I put it, I'm going to taste it first and tell you guys if you should even bite it. Okay. Because I'm a little suspect. I feel like you should get needed more mayo, but whatever. Because I'm like so white. I love mayo. I fucking love mayo. You don't think you put enough? I don't know. We're going to tell you. <laughs> It was a pretty strong glob. Put a lot of mayo. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say because I saw you took a. It looks like it looks like half the, mayo. half the. All right, let's see. Oh. That's a lot of mayo. That's a lot of mayo. That's a lot of mayo. Good though. Mayo, you know. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. I like it. It was good. It was good. My good. favorite. What do you think my favorite was? Steak. Yep. Yeah. No, that's good. I was good. The steak was fucking pretty undeniable. The steak was um, unreal. I've been yeah. eating that every day for the rest of my life. I would gravitate more to the steak, but I don't get shrimp that much. So. The shrimp was pretty fucking good. And when you think about calories, it's not that bad. No. I got to tell you, so, well, you know what's crazy? You can get a rotisserie chicken for $10, or you can buy a raw chicken, okay. cook it yourself for $10. Isn't that crazy? Well, they're the same price. So, which one's better? Rotisserie, easy. Why would you go through the effort? Yeah, well, exactly. I would why would you ever go through the effort? I would rather get the raw, and I'll tell you why. Why? Because the rot the rotisserie is in the plastic, and it's hot. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> Careful. <laughs> All the microplastics are melting into the rotisserie. So you know what she does now, like an absolute psychopath. Right. Tell me. She goes on the plane. And she doesn't want to have headphones anymore. No. So she watches her iPad in the plane of everybody on full volume. No, no I headphones. don't do on full like volume. Like a toddler. <laughs> and I, the whole, I'm in a panic the whole flight trying She's to turn the volume the down. Time. It's not full volume. She's like that person that watches on speakerphone. Why don't you listen to headsets? Because I feel like it's too much EMF in my ear. What's EMF? <laughs> I don't know who stands for. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I don't Electromagnetic radiation, maybe? No, there's no. There's, there's an R in there there's if it was. There's frequency? <laughs> frequency? Um... Sweet. Let's get a viral clip. Okay. Let's see. Butthole sunning is something I'm going to do as soon as we're done. You need to go sun your butthole. Uh, I'm going to sun my butthole. Something's in front burning of you guys. in your asshole. How long? Uh, five minutes. You'll get immediate energy. Anyway. You guys, you want to do that as a as a team building <laughs> thing? Who wants to sun their butthole stage? We're going to pull the balls back so they don't get in the way. Yep. Oh, well, that's we're going to just tape those. I do it to my son. I bring him outside. I Yeah. And just grab his feet and just show his yeah. asshole to the world. Yeah. I fucking love that. I'm going to do that to my daughter. She's 17. <laughs> I love fucking stop fighting it. Just suck it in. Take it. Take it. But that should be the name of this show. Something's burning. Sunning your butthole sunning. Five minutes is, I feel like five minutes might five be Five minutes. Oh, well, you could do two. I think two. Two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Just do it two minutes. Two minutes. I'll just do it as long as it takes for me to come sucking my own dick. <laughs> <laughs> is that the clip? Is that the clip? I love that you guys are fun. I love that you guys are fun. Your podcast is awesome. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Your network is impressive. It really is. Everyone should go over to Dear Media. Check out Josh Peck and Boy With No Job. Ben. Ben. His wife, Girl With No Job, is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. But the whole network is impressive. It's It's... It's it really is imp amazing what you guys are doing, and you're changing the industry. And I and I keep doing what you're doing because I'm a fan. Thank, Thank you, you. Thanks yeah. for having Thank us. Thank you for it's having fun. us. We're fans of you. Us. I can't wait to see you sunning your butthole. Well, if you stick around for five minutes, you'll witness it. Okay. <laughs> and.
Cuts. Something's burning. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.